For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. On February 11, US President Joe Biden issued an executive order that would split the frozen funds from the Afghanistan Bank between humanitarian assistance to Afghanistan and funds to cover judgments from lawsuits that 9/11 victims and the families had filed against the Taliban in US courts. The decision is receiving heavy backlash and has been called theft. Afghanistan is currently experiencing a dire humanitarian crisis. The Afghan government, backed by the US, collapsed in August last year after the Taliban captured Kabul while the US pulled out its troops after a 20-year war. Soon after, DAB's US assets were frozen. Of the 7.1 billion US dollars, 3.5 billion dollars will be set aside for the 9/11 victims. The rest will be transferred to a trust fund for the benefit of Afghan people. The Taliban said the money was property of the people of Afghanistan. Former Afghan President Hamid Karzai termed Biden's decision unjust and unfair. He added that Afghans have also been victims of al-Qaeda leader Osama bin Laden. Afghanistan's economy has been made heavily dependent on foreign aid, which also formed a major share of state expenditure. The seizure of central bank assets, which legally belong to the Afghan people, will have a catastrophic impact. The UN has projected that the country's economy is set to contract by 20% in 2022. Teachers and government workers have not received salaries. Inflation and unemployment have soared, and 90% of the population is living below the poverty line. Meanwhile, all 34 provinces of Afghanistan are facing crisis or emergency levels of acute food insecurity. The UN World Food Programme has warned that over 50% of the population is projected to be acutely food insecure in 2022. This includes 8.7 million people at risk of famine-like conditions. The country is also facing its worst drought in 27 years, which has led to a 20% decline in the harvest of wheat. A survey of 1,400 households by Save the Children found that 82% of Afghans have lost their income since the Taliban took over. A surge in prices has meant that 75% of families have resorted to borrowing to afford food. 18% of families have been forced to send their children out to work. This indicated that over 1 million children could be currently involved in child labor. The economic crisis has also pushed the country's health system into collapse. Only five hospitals in Afghanistan are still offering COVID-19 treatment. Meanwhile, the country has witnessed a sharp rise in infections, the true scale of which remains difficult to determine. The WHO has stated that public laboratories in Afghanistan tested 8,496 samples between January 30th and February 5th. Nearly half of these were positive, amounting to a 47.4% positivity rate. Outbreaks of dengue fever and measles have also been reported. Hospitals are struggling with shortages of medical workers and supplies including medicines and oxygen. The decades of war and the escalation of fighting in 2021 have also displaced over 3.5 million people, 700,000 in the last year alone. Not to mention Over the course of 20 years of US military's presence in Afghanistan, over 100,000 Afghans were killed. Millions were arrested and injured. The decision to split the money takes away from all these people who have suffered for 20 years. And this isn't even where the problems end. For a country like Afghanistan with a crashing economy, the least requirement to make things better is to have a banking system. With the current restrictions on the banking system of Afghanistan, things get much more difficult for Afghan people. People have to be able to deposit money into banks knowing the money is secure and have exclusive rights to it. At the end of the day, humanitarian aid can never replace the country's central bank or the banking system.